I want to talk about work trauma. This is a topic I've talked about before, but not for a while about. And it's a topic that I'm really passionate about. And I think we need to talk more about. And I was reminded of something that happened to me yesterday. And I could really feel it very viscerally still in my body. Not as bad as it used to be. It's probably about six, maybe getting on seven years. So I'm probably at the end of that cycle of like it in my in my cells being kind of regenerated, um, which takes seven years. Um, but I could feel it very like viscerally in my body. So I was aware that it was still there for me a little bit. And when it comes to experiencing these kind of traumatic moments in the workplace um it doesn't have to, it reminded me that it doesn't have to be this way now that i understand my human design i am much kinder to myself um than i would have been back then when that happened back then i just felt like there was something wrong with me that i couldn't perform in the way that i was being expected to perform now i have a deep understanding and acceptance of the way that i'm designed that I would have found a different approach to, to, to doing it. So it wouldn't necessarily have been a hard no, but I would have found a different way of doing it that was more suited to the way I'm designed. So as a leader and a manager of a team, I think this is just so important to understand the real basics of your team's human design so that you can ensure that you're not traumatising them by asking them to do something that's not comfortable for them, that's not... Um, that they're just simply not designed to do in the way that you might be designed to do. And I'm going to share, share the story so that you've got some context. So I was asked to present at a company event, a big kickoff event, um, and I was given about three weeks notice and it was about a topic that I wasn't that confident about. And it was a US company and their kickoff events were huge. So it was going to be on a big stage I was going to have a headset, there was going to be music playing as I walked out onto the stage. And that might sound like a dream to some of you. Of course it will, because that's how you're designed to, to be seen. Um, for me, it was a nightmare. And my boss kept telling me that I'd be great at it. He said that I was very engaging in team meetings and that when presenting on my region, that everyone was very engaged and listening to me and I seemed very confident so it would be a breeze for me but that was a very different format and different environment I was in a meeting I got to listen to everybody else first and then I kind of shared my perspective on my region um also he loved public speaking so he felt like I was something it was something that I should love too with some practice and a bit of a forced hand um let's just throw her in at the deep end and see how she flies um and I was about to go on top of this in this three week notice that I had, I was about to go on holiday for 10 days. So it completely ruined my holiday. During that time, I stressed and I stressed about it, trying to come up with what the hell am I going to talk about? Um, and by the time the event came around, I had tonsillitis. So my body was physically trying to protect me from what was a dangerous situation, what it perceived as a dangerous situation. Um, so, you know, that, that stress, it just all went to the throat. The, the one place that I needed, the one part of my body that I needed in order to do that. And had my boss understood my human design, he would have known the following. So he would have known that I'm not here to be observed. So I, I, I'm not the one that people are, like all the attention is supposed to be on me as the expert. Um, my role is as the observer. This is where I thrive. So it's not that I can't stand up and speak in front of people, but it's that I don't want, I don't, I'm not designed to have all the attention on me. And I also need time to emotionally prepare. And three weeks with a holiday in the middle was not enough time for me to prepare. I also needed something to respond to. And he didn't really give me a brief. There were no, there was no, this is what we want you to cover. or We want you to answer these questions or this is the challenge we have. How are you going to, you know, respond to that challenge? Um, it was just this open, wide brief. Talk about whatever you want, just within this parameter. And that was very kind of um, overwhelming for me. And also just to trust me 
if I say that something feels like a no to me and not to force me into doing something that feels uncomfortable. Um, so, you know, I'm emotionally defined. I'm not for spontaneity. I am, you know, I, I need time to emotionally prepare for things and that wasn't enough time for me. And no one else can tell me how much is enough time. I don't even know how much time I'm gonna need. But I know that if I've got a holiday, it's not it's not enough time for me. Um, what I really needed was to be asked if I wanted to do it first and foremost, so that I could check in with my gut and decide whether that was a yes or a no, and then wait for emotional clarity. Really simple. There was no question, it was just expected of me. Um, I needed more time to prepare. I needed a topic that I was confident about. I'm designed to have with my two four profile to have my genius pulled out of me so that together with my wait to respond strategy as an mg you know i need somebody asking me questions pulling the information out of me don't leave me on my own to come up with this presentation sit down with me ask me questions help me build it um and also to be an, a different approach and something that would definitely have felt more comfortable for me would have been to be included on a panel discussion perhaps, or design it as a fireside chat with somebody interviewing me as opposed to this presentation of just me on the stage. And that way the, the attention wouldn't all have been on me. Um, I would have been able to observe others talking, listen to the questions and respond to them. That would have been a comfortable way for me to stand up and talk about the topic. So I tell this because Understanding your team members at this level is so important because it means not traumatizing them. It means playing to their strengths, not forcing them to work on things that you think they should be good at. Um, it's about allowing them to really thrive as themselves. And that's when you're gonna get the most out of them. That's when they're gonna perform at the highest level. And if you're a leader who also cares about your team, um, you don't want to do that to somebody you know, don't want them to be six, seven years on still getting that feeling when they remember that situation because um, you want better for your team. I know that you care about your team and some of this might be unintentional. The majority of this is unintentional. My boss never intended to, to do that to me. Um, and that's why really understanding your team members at that level and understanding yourself and knowing that that's just the way you're designed and being able to offer different approaches to doing things um, is just so important. So if this resonates, I'd love for you to share any situations where things like that have happened to you. Um, if you are a leader who wants to know more about human design, wants to hear about how I'm working with other teams to do this, you don't need to go into all of the detail. Um, there are some real high level pieces just following strategy and authority for your team members that are just going to completely transform the way that you're working together and interacting so if you are interested in hearing more then you can book a discovery call with me and we can talk more about it but i'd also love to hear about your experiences in the comments